Hello, this is Lucian Miller from Innovative Designs and in this video what we're going to do is show you step by step how to program a Scorpion speed controller with the new uh, wireless programming system. A lot of people have asked about this and call us and email us all the time. How do I do this? How do I do that? You know, So we're going to show you step by step how to use the programming system to set up uh, a speed controller and how to uh, all the different parameters that are available for you to choose. So uh, sit back and uh, relax and enjoy the video. Okay, here we have all the components of a power system that you would use uh, when you were going to be programming it. We've got a Scorpion 60 amp speed controller here, a Scorpion 3026 motor. Uh, we have the ESC programming card, which is your wireless remote. We also have the uh, infrared receiver module. And uh, I also have a, a, just a three-cell LiPo battery. And uh, instead of using a radio, I'm just going to use a servo driver to simulate the throttle channel with, because you do have to make sure that you send a good signal to the speed controller while you're programming it. And if you're not sending it that one millisecond wide pulse like a receiver would at idle, then the speed controller won't boot up. Um, so to hook the system up, uh, there's a connector right here on the infrared re receiver board and I don't know if you can see it or not, but right here at the very top edge there's the word brown silk screen right onto the circuit board. So when you plug your speed controller lead in you want to make sure that the brown wire is up. This is a mistake a lot of people make because this wire coming out here has orange on top and this wire here has brown on top. They try and match the colors up and they get it plugged in backwards. So once you've got the uh, speed controller plugged into the uh, infrared receiver board. The next thing you want to do is plug the other end of the infrared receiver into your radio receiver or in this case I'm going to be plugging it into the uh, servo driver. Now you do have to have a motor connected because the motor is what actually beeps to let you know you're getting your different commands from your uh, speed controller uh, programming system. And then finally when you have everything set up make sure that your servo driver or your throttle channel is at zero throttle and then we're going to plug in the battery and then we'll get our normal four tone uh, sound which you'll hear a couple seconds after I plug the battery in. So here we go. Okay, that tone right there is the normal startup tone for a Scorpion speed controller to let you know that it booted up fine, everything's working well. Now, in order to put the system into the programming mode, um, there's a little switch on here that you can switch from the PPM position to the IRS position. Now, the first thing that you want to do when you program the speed controller is to set the throttle endpoints. Now, to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug my battery temporarily and I'm going to turn my throttle up to full throttle. If you were using the transmitter, you'd raise the stick all the way to full throttle. Now, when I plug this in, I'm only going to get two beeps. That lets me know that I'm just set the high throttle point. Now I'm going to reduce down to idle throttle and I get the two beeps that, followed by the other two beeps. Now what I just did there is I set the, tr the, the throttle travel adjustment or the throttle endpoint adjustment in the speed controller. Now the speed controller knows what full throttle is going to be and it also knows what idle throttle is going to be. So that's the first step that you do and that does not require the programming system. In fact, you can set the throttle endpoints without the IR receiver at all in the system. Uh, because whenever you have the switch in the PPM position, this is effectively bypassed and you're just going right through the, uh, uh, the board. Now, in order to get it into programming mode, you flip the switch into the IRS position and about three seconds after you do that, you'll get three beeps from the uh, speed controller. There we go. Now we know we're in the programming mode. And Anytime you do a program, you're going to hit a uh, key that for, for a feature. Then you're going to type in the value for that feature and then hit the enter key. So, for example, let's do low voltage cutoff. Low voltage cutoff on a three cell pack, 
we're going to set it at uh, let's say 9.6 volts. With the, uh, the, th the four cell controllers it has to be a three digit value and it has to be an even number so 9.2 volts, 9.4 volts, 9.6 volts, stuff like that but you can't do 9.5 volts. So to set the uh, low voltage cutoff I'm going to hit LVC and then 0, 9, 6 and then enter. And then you'll hear the dedupe uh, confirmation tone to let you know you've received that program. And now I've set the uh, low voltage cutoff to 9.6 volts. Okay, now that we've programmed the low voltage cutoff, uh, let's look at some of the other features. Uh, for example, if you're going to be using the speed controller in a helicopter, you're going to want to engage the soft start feature. So to do that, once you've got the system booted up, we're going to flip the switch into the infrared mode and then wait for the beeps from the motor. Okay, now we're in the programming mode. And then we're going to hit soft start 1, then enter. And then you get the two-tone confirmation to let you know that you've uh, put the soft start feature on. Now to test that feature, we're going to flip the switch back into the PPM mode, wait for the normal boot up. There we go. Now, if we, when we open the throttle all the way, the motor should spool up nice and slow. And it looks like the soft start's working great. It's, it takes 15 seconds for it to come up to full speed. There we go. And back down to idle. And so that's how you'd uh, turn on the soft start. Now the other features that they're available are uh, program cutoff type, whether you want it to be a hard cutoff or 50% cutoff. Uh, current overload protection, which you can turn on and off. Uh, we recommend leaving that on. If you turn that off and burn up your speed controller, that'll void your warranty. We do also have the brake uh, level, where you can have any level from uh, 1 up to 5. Uh, motor acceleration time delay, and that what that does is control how quickly the speed controller reacts when you do rapid changes in throttle. The uh, frequency is the, the PWM frequency. The timing uh, lets you set the motor timing. And then you've got the airplane mode and the car boat mode. Now the car boat mode doesn't work on these speed controllers because these aren't car or boat controllers. But if you've had this speed controller in either the soft start or the governor mode and you want to turn them off, the way you do that is with the airplane mode. And the, so if we flip the switch back into the programming mode, and we hit the air button and then one and enter. That'll put it back in the airplane mode. Now if we reboot the speed controller uh, by flipping the switch, now the throttle performs just like normal without the soft start feature. And uh, as you can see right now, there's no brake. And when I shut the throttle off, it just goes right down. If I wanted to turn the brake on, We'll put it back in the programming mode. There's five levels of brake. One is no brake, two is light brake, three is medium brake, four is medium hard, and five is hard brake. So if I hit uh, the brake button and then five and then enter, that's going to be the hard brake. So if we flip the switch, let the system uh, reboot again, and I try and work the motor, see? That's the hard brake. Now, if, if you don't want it to brake that uh, uh, that hard, you could go with a medium brake, uh, and that would be brake level three. So I'll hit brake three, and we'll flip the switch back to the uh, PPM mode to reboot the controller. And now, when I shut the throttle off, see it doesn't doesn't stop quite as fast. And if I wanted a, a little bit lighter brake, I could do, you know, brake mode 2, and then that would be just a very gentle brake. Um, so that's pretty much uh, how you use the, uh, the system. It works very easily. And when you're done, uh, a lot of people have said, hey, you know, do I have to have the infrared uh, receiver in the system? It's like, no, you don't. If you can unplug the, 
battery, you can take it completely out, plug your speed controller straight into your throttle channel on your receiver, uh, plug it back in, and, and now, now we've got the infrared receiver out of the system, and the throttle channel works fine without it. So, if you have a system where you think you might be wanting to do a few changes, you can leave the infrared receiver in place. Or once you're done programming, if you want to, you can take it out and uh, not use it at all. Just plug your speed controller straight into your throttle channel. Okay, well there you have it. Uh, we've gone over all of the different features on how to use the Scorpion uh, infrared programming system on a Scorpion receiver. Uh, we've gone through several of the features of the programming card and also shown how to use the IR receiver. Uh, you can download the uh, instruction manual in a full 8.5 by 11 page version from the uh, downloads and software section of our website at www.innovativedesigns.com and you can see all of the different features and it explains all, all of the different parameters that are available for you to choose from on the uh, speed controller setup. So hopefully. Uh, you've gotten some information out of this video and be sure to check out our other videos uh, on our website at uh, www.innovativedesigns.com thanks for watching